Okay. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay. One second, guys. I'm just going to start the show. Hey there, it's Kelly Pickler. You're listening to the DJ Danny Show. Hey there, it's Kelly. Good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, May 21st, 2019. Welcome to the DJ Danny Show on HamiltonRadio.net, stream HR2. I'm your host, DJ Danny. I'm joined um, on Skype and on the phone <laughs> with my co-host, Domini Monroe. Domini, thank you for being here. Hey! I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, I like to say that you're here definitely in spirit, and um, I feel all your energy through the phone, so I love that, too. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, do you want to introduce some of our guests? Because I know that you... Yes, know, you absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. So, we have with us the amazing Brad Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. And Hello. we also have uh, Calvin Damien Thornborough, who is uh, the social media. He's one of the basics from uh, Flint. I totally murdered your name, didn't I? <laughs> it's all right. Can you say All it? good. <laughs> Did I say it right or not even close? Uh, there's so many variations. Uh, yours is unique. We'll go with that. <laughs> He's definitely getting called Calvin Demean forever now. I'm though. a big fan of that. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely getting called that forever now. That's cool. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna stick with you for like life. <laughs> and it's all thanks to DJ Danny. Just remember that. <laughs> I'll shout you out in future when other people call me that. <laughs> all right, so let's get a little bit started. Um, you know, just for having you guys here, we're very glad to have you here, and we appreciate you know you being here and. You doing this interview? This is probably the most amazing thing that we could ever ask for. Oh no! Thank you for having us. Thanks for even inviting us. That's yeah. That's very kind of you to say. Of course, you are truly welcome, both of you. And Domini, do you want to start with a question? Yeah. I mean, first of all, let's start with a fun question. What time is it there? <laughs> It is seven minutes past midnight, so it's Wednesday for us, Calvin, isn't it? It is just ticked on to Wednesday. Wow, it's a peek into the future. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's a really good way of looking at it, yeah. How's yesterday? How is it over in yesterday? Is it good? <laughs> it's nice. It's nice and sunny here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just it's cool in the studio. We have the air conditioner on. Well, hey. So I think that's definitely amazing. <laughs> it being midnight definitely helps with the temperature. It's nice and cool. <laughs> I was going to say, are you guys, like, like, in your, like, bedrooms and stuff now? Like, are you ready for bed or no? <laughs> Tucked up. <laughs> Almost ready. Separately, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. uh, this time. It's not a slumber party? Oh, man. I know. I know, because that's, that's the other thing. Like, I, th I think I should mention... We totally misinterpreted the time difference wrong on our end. So we Skyped an hour ago <laughs> because we're in, we live an hour apart. Yes, so we were like Skyping an hour ago and we were like, right, let's do this, yeah, radio show, yeah. And I was like totally like in my clothes, whereas now I'm in my jimmies, my, I'm in my gym jams. I've got my comfortable, happy recording hoodie on. Love um, it. And I know that hoodie well. Yeah, yeah, Calvin knows this hoodie well. Intimately. And the remnants of a hot chocolate on my coffee table, so that's... I'm full bed mode right now. This is cool for me. I'm chill. No biscuits? Very relaxed. No biscuits today. No biscuits today. Not yet. Biscuits later. <laughs> yeah, that, that's when I'm really having a crazy day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't we just get a little bit, you know, started. What exactly, you know, came about the band name Flint? Does it mean anything? Oh, there's a very specific story with this. <gasps> story time! It was um, a journey, wasn't it, Carl? It was a... I, we, I think we settled on a set of circumstances... Like, uh, sorry, a set of parameters. It had to be stylized in all capitals. It had to be one word. And I think towards the end, it had to either be... It had to begin with an F or an M. And we just yeah. went through loads and loads of words that fit those parameters and then decided on one that we all well it was one that we that, it was one that none of us hated okay. 
but we all came to love it. Yeah, because we, initially, I, I've always had this whole thing about we're like this with our songs and we're like this with our graphics and everything and it's kind of you can't we don't like to just come up with an idea and then attempt to make it work later down the line yeah. we like to really think about everything we do so that we will always be happy with it in a way and it's something we're happy to put out there and be like yeah that's us so when it came to the name we did come up with a few names and this sounds really weird but I would write them down and we'd look at them written down and if it didn't make sense looking at it <laughs> okay. what were they? it would it wouldn't make it and Flint's the best one. What were the names before Flint? Do you remember? It was we... one there was Maguire. Yeah, Maguire's the only one that I can remember off the top of my head. I there were some crazy names. Okay, Maguire. Yeah, as in Toby Maguire from the Spider Man films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. OG oh, ones. <laughs> TV. <laughs> Liz, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't think that's a bad name. But I like... I think that was... Was it the second, second in the running for a long time? Yeah, both... because we pretended we got, like, pictures of things, the colours that we liked, and we actually put every name in this font we found. <laughs> <laughs> and we looked at them all in that font, and then Flint was like, "Yeah, it's Flint, isn't it?" And it we were like, "Yeah, it is." Yeah, Flint. we all knew. And that definitely felt like that was the name. And it did it kind of like feel like it spoke to you a little bit too. Like when you yeah. read it, you were like, "This is our name." Yeah, it felt right. Yeah, and I think it felt right, especially when when we released our first song, and we heard people say like, "Oh, have you heard that? Have you heard that new tune from Flint?" And it was like, yeah, that makes sense. That oh, sounds yeah. right. That was, yeah. See, I was scared to right. say Flint. I've been saying F L Y N T this past like <laughs> and I think I, told, I, <laughs> I think I even told Domini that, and she's like, who? And I was like, I was like, the, the yeah. kid from from House of Anubis, uh, Brad from you know he played Baby, and uh, he's in it. And she's like, oh, I gotta come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <pretty much. laughs> exactly. Although I feel like now I really want to know what F L Y N T stood for. I really want to know that now. Yeah, so you guys got to come up with something like that. We'll put some time into that. Yeah, or maybe... Yeah, we'll put it back to you. You can either make it like a song title or maybe like another like album cover kind of thing. You guys have a lot of stuff you could work with. Or an album name. Yeah, that too. We will all be dying to know what, you know, what we're playing. Because it's just just so, uh, such a very unique word that you're like not used to saying constantly but you know you're supporting this band that you love and you know want to support so you're saying flint and people are like what <laughs> are you cursing are you being nice what is this you know so, um i just think that's yeah flint is definitely a very unique word and i can't wait to find out what you guys have brewing for it no <laughs> oh, thank you i think flint is a type of stone isn't it with an eye Flint with an with I, I, but we're Flint with a Y. Yeah, like the Flintstones. Yeah, so yeah, because everything was made out of Flint. That's that's what that was, wasn't it? Oh my God! Yeah, that's what it was. That's why they were called that. Yeah. I just realised mm-hmm. that people could now draw that parallel. I just, <laughs> I just realised a little bit when I hear Flint, the first thing I think of F is um, uh, Fabian. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that was us. That was us there. I just got like one of our songs in my. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that sounds familiar. Sneak peek or something. Yeah, we actually have your music as well. Uh, did you want to play one of your songs? Absolutely. Which yeah. one? We have Honey, Some Again, Anyway, or Julia? Anywhere? Let's do Anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and. I'm so excited to hear. I'm sorry? I said, I'm so excited to hear. I'm so excited. Me too. On the radio. Yes, you are. And is there anything behind it? Uh, it, it was the first um, song that we released from a series of live sessions. Okay. It was, um, so we, we got together in a little hall um, in our hometown and, and recorded a bunch of live sessions for our songs. And anyway, it was the first one we put out. All right. Well, we're going to play anywhere here on Hamilton Radio. 
We'll be right back with Flint as we play anywhere. We'll be right back to the Eugenia Show on Hamilton Radio Dodnet Stream HRT. Tell me, have you dreamed of ways to keep me in the pit so I am making changes? I won't hold you back. I won't hold you back. I tell you from my point of view, because I ain't aching from nobody else but you. vocals in that and the bassist was amazing calvin oh thank you very kind you're very welcome and um we also you have four all together in your band correct or is it five it's four it's four. four okay four. and everyone's name oh, man. there's um this guy called brad he's a bit of a weirdo oh. um yeah seconded. <laughs> yeah i'm sorry <laughs> wasn't, calvin. He, wasn't he actor first though I think, yeah, I think he was in this show that was about Greek mythology, I think it was. I thought it was Egyptian. Oh, wow, I'm behind. <laughs> he was, yeah, I think, no, I think it was a show. It was called something like House of Zeus. I can't remember. It was something. And I think it was on um, uh, Cartoon Network. And I definitely remember you seeing it with your top off. It's very Zeus-like. Yeah, it was very Zeus-like. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> Those were the dark, the dark times. 
Um, <laughs> no, but um, in all seriousness, there's there's me, Brad, there's Calvin on the bass, then there's Stephen on the drums, and Emma on the vocals. So you and Emma switch, right? Or you guys do like the man vocals, the woman vocals? Yeah, it's, so it's kind of like when we write a song, we we have very similar music tastes. Everyone in the band, we, we, we all have people we're into very much that reciprocates across the board. Um, and when it came to writing, um, sorry, writing songs, mm-hmm. we started to write songs that had kind of unison verses where it was kind of one line against another almost kind of like um oh uh I, i'm gonna kick myself for forgetting the name of the who had um oh, he said he's gonna kick himself. <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna kick myself for forgetting this um um Bloody bridge hell. over troubled water um Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. It's that, thank yeah, you Carl. Yeah. Oh, you I, know. Know. i'm ashamed that i forgot it's okay brad you're good um but yeah, so you know, but that kind of where the entire song is in a harmony line, mm-hmm. and even though there's two melodies, people seem to pick one that they resonate with and they sing that to themselves. So we started mm-hmm. writing songs that very much went down that line. Um, but also, sometimes there are parts in the song where it's kind of like, well, that just really needs a great female vocal, that just really needs a male vocal, and we do decide who takes which parts. Hello? Hello? I'm here. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, yeah, there was just a bit of a gap there. Sorry. No, it's okay. They just changed my mic over. <laughs> oh, right. So I was like, I was like, oh, no, they're going to think I hung up on them. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, no, definitely with what you were saying there, that is 100% true. Um, and I just think, you know, you guys, you all work together differently. Like, you all have a certain thing that you bring to the table to the band, and that makes you guys grow and, you know, learn from each other and very grow strong from it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, what? I, um, I was just, yeah, we were just agreeing with you. It, it, it is a thing where, you know, when you're in a band, ev- everyone brings a different element. But I think, I think, and Calvin, I think you'd agree, we, we share a common goal in what we want to be responsible for creating. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Sometimes that's like the best thing, though, you know? Sure. And, and I think with that approach, it maybe helps, <clears throat> helps the end result hopefully be greater than the sum of its parts. If that makes sense, I think that all (laughs) feeds into it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because I... Oh, go on. No, go on. Finish. Oh, no. No. I was just going to kind of like... Adding to that, the sum of the parts thing, I think... And, you know, it's interesting for me with the Anubis history. I think it's really interesting to have become the person where being more known for something that I wasn't responsible for creating... I was responsible for being a part of it, but I didn't write it. I didn't make it. I think it's interesting because I've now become the guy where everyone's like, oh, that guy that was in the TV show has a band. But it's so mad for me to look at that because Flint is the one thing in my life where I've been responsible for being a part of the creation process and the curation process Mm -hmm. and the direction process and the output and the performing and nothing to me has felt more natural in my life. And you don't feel scripted, you know? You had a yeah, exactly. Of, but there was a exactly. lot of scenes in there where it looked like Nina and Fabian were, like, unscripted totally, too. So it made it just look real. I loved it. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, Dominic, did you have a question for them? I, I want you to yeah, talk, I too. I... <laughs> yeah, I have a bunch of questions. All right, come on. I'm a musician myself. Um, okay, so what do you consider your genre? Oh, that's such a hard one, Calvin. What? <laughs> I think we we've we found we've become quite comfortable with saying indie pop. I think is I is that. is the way we're going with it. Indie pop. Northern Brew, right? Northern Brew, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Northern Brew. Well, I think over in the UK, I'm not sure how much you guys, I'm not sure how much of this culture actually makes it over to the states, but in the UK, there's a there's a big thing about the north and the south because there's a lot of generalizations that can sweep about the north and a lot of generalizations can sweep about the south but in the uk um a lot of bands like oasis 
um, Catfish and the Bottlemen, Blossom, the Smiths. the Smiths, yes. A, a lot of bands that have classically been from a rock background and become pop. Um, oh, the Beatles. There's another. You know, oh, it, yeah, it's yeah, a, northern, yeah. a lot of northern bands. There's almost this kind of um, stereotype that is attached to northern bands, where they're almost a bit looser. They're almost a bit more approximate, mm-hmm. less precise. And I think we're bringing that to an approach when it comes to pop music, mm-hmm. which is typically more of a you would think of pop music as almost more of a southern thing, really. Um, kind of. But when it comes to pop, we classify ourselves as indie pop because pop is what we were influenced by, especially pop from ages gone, you know, the things that were previously um, pop in the 80s and 90s and 70s, but actually it was funk and soul or it was R&B. That's what influences a, a lot. But we are independent. We, we don't rely on um, heavy production to change what we do. So that's where the indie part of it comes from. Mm -hmm. Well, I think with your indie pop, though, and everything of your genre, you know, your genre and what you make it, it it makes it 100% better and natural because it's all you guys. And I don't hear any auto-tune in your music, and that makes me 100% more a fan because I hate everything I hear on the radio. Oh, that's really interesting you say that because I think... um, I used to use (laughs) auto-tune on everything as almost like a confidence crutch. And once you start to hear auto-tune, you almost get used to those those notes being really, really solid. Mm -hmm. But it is a sound that now I couldn't I couldn't bring myself to even be a part of anymore. Um, And with Flint, it wouldn't feel right, would it? No, it wouldn't be right at all. And with Flint, it's so much more about the actual performance, the actual vocal performance and the feel that auto-tune never graced a take in any Flint stuff. It's never been there, ever. But I think we are... I, I, I think I could say this, because as a band, we, we, we're we quite blessed to have two um, exceptionally talented singers, and, you know, some bands don't even have one. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. That's true. No, I, no it, it, it's testament to, um, to Brad and Emma's, uh, you know, ability and, and sort of confidence as, as performers that it's not a, it's not needed, at all. So it's not even a, it's not even a, a thought. Yeah, oh, thanks, Calv. I owe you a biscuit. <laughs> yeah, you do. I'll, <laughs> I'll take that biscuit. I owe you next, a biscuit. Next rehearsal. Maybe you have hot chocolate biscuit. instead. Don't you have hot chocolate? You said you had. Oh gosh, you know what? Hot chocolate is just such a thing. We have, we have band meetings, um, m- maybe every now and then, maybe every week or so, because um, we all live quite far apart from each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe not quite um, far by American standards. Yeah, yeah, it's not quite like state w- statewide, but um but we're about we, an hour I, 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 is it an hour and a half yeah. between us? Between me and you it's an hour and a half and then Stephen is kind of like an hour away from where you are. So yeah, there's there's not quite a bit of distance in. there. And whenever we meet up there's a Starbucks um at a service station. Um, okay. which I guess you guys would call a hospitality stop. Right. Is that right? Like on the freeway, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, or a service um, station. I've never said hospitality. Oh, my gosh. Right. Forgive me. I've been completely ignorant there. Yes, yeah, so it is a service no, station. No, you're fine. It's okay. I, I oh my God, you know what? It's either it, or is perfectly fine. You're good. Yeah, all oh, right. It was it, it was always Natalia that used to call it a hospitality stop, and I was like, oh, that's what it is. And so I totally assumed that was like a nationwide. <laughs> there goes Nina again. Go on. Yeah, there she is. Um, but um, yeah, so we stop at a Starbucks at, a, at this service station, and there's usually a lot of hot chocolates getting purchased as we decide what we're doing next. Do you always get hot chocolate? What's your favorite thing to order from Starbucks? Oh. I was just gonna ask that. Because I might try it now, <laughs> if they have it here. <laughs> when the time is right, I'm all about pumpkin spice slides. Yeah, I'm all me about too. it. Me too. Me too. High five to that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be the. I'm. I'm gonna be so unpopular right now. I. I. Oh, please. Please don't be offended. I. I. I really don't like the pumpkin spice lattes. You know. Oh, oh mate. Okay. But. But I, to be honest, though, you I'm a loss anyway pop, because I don't like coffee. I don't drink coffee, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, so, you get a pass for that then. Yeah, I get a pass for that. Where I, I, I'm into the, um, sometimes I like the fruit coolers they do in summer. Okay. 
Okay. Um, the frappuccinos or culadas? A culada is Dunkin' Donuts. Oh my god, American words for things are so much more like intense. <laughs> they're so much yeah, they're so much better. Like I feel like over here they would probably brand it as a ice blended fruit shake drink. <laughs> Some fruity water. water. Yeah, water. fruit fruity water. Mmm, so good the queen has it. Something <laughs> like that. I don't know. There's the slogan. I love that. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, um, go to that. Uh Brad, you get half a hug. Calvin gets the full hug though, because I love pumpkin. <laughs> oh, yeah, I will no, that's that. understandable. That is understandable. <laughs> um Yeah, no, I was definitely just wondering what you guys got because you said you went to Starbucks and stuff. And we all have different, you know, stuff that we like or we drink. I mean, I always get a berry acaya, which is just like berries with water and fruit juice. Oh, oh so there we go. Nice. Fruity, fruity water. Yeah, fruity water. Exactly. Yeah. Fruity water chick thingy you said. Exactly that. <laughs> fruity water. That's that's exactly it. There we are. Um, and then I'm the coffee drinker for sure. <laughs> what, Jiminy? I'm a coffee drinker for sure. Oh, I love coffee too. Wrapping it up for the coffee beans. Uh, no, I'll, I'll have it with coconut milk or almond milk. Yeah. Oh, I love an almond milk latte. I'm a big, big fan of the almond milk. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you drink it black, Brad? If I have coffee, which is really rare, we might be talking like twice a year. Okay. I'll... I, I, I find it so bitter to the taste. Like I, I I'm really weird. This is the it's the same reason that I don't actually drink beer or alcohol. Okay. Because I find like bitterness I, I really can't deal with. So if I do have a coffee, it's gonna be like a cortado or a shot and like an espresso shot. And just okay. down in one. Yeah, if, if I really need that pick me up, which actually I did on the weekend just gone. That was my first coffee of the year on the weekend on Sunday. <laughs> Wow. We had so many. Oh, we had so many keyboard takes to do, and my fingers were sore, and I was getting grumpy. So I was like, "Right, this is it." So I had a little shot of coffee, and that was that was me. That was enough for me. And hasn't slept since. Haven't slept since. And that's why he's wide awake on the DJ Danny show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some Lavazza all up in here, and I'm off. <laughs> we still have a couple other songs. We have Honey, Same Again, Julia. Oh, Calvin, you pick. I pick the last one. Um, oh, here we go. Um, I want to go with the same again. Okay. Yes. And anything with... behind it? Why the title? Um, it's... Come on, Brad, it... you're, the, you're the songwriter here. Well, same, <laughs> same again is... Same again is... It's the main hook of the song, but as well as that, the whole song is, is basically about how someone you have been around, whether it be someone you're in a relationship or someone you were just around has clearly had a long-lasting effect on you. And no matter how much you've tried, even though you know they're terrible for you or it hasn't been a good experience for you, you can't seem to let go of it. He actually um, wrote the song about me. I did. I wrote <laughs> it about You just can't Calvin. let go of me. Or is it about Look, coffee? I'm going to be honest, guys. Me and Calvin, <laughs> we were together for 13 years. It was a long slog. We, it in the tough. end, it didn't work out. No. But, we're, yeah, there we we're go. We're civil now. We're amicable. <laughs> we get on. <laughs> We try our best. We try. We share the kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to play. What song did you say? Same again? Same again. Okay. Yeah. We're going to play Same Again by Flint. And we'll be right back to the DJ Danny Show on HamiltonRadio.net stream HRT.
I love that. And we are back. Oh, you. Yes, and we're back to the DJ Danny Show on HamiltonRadio.net. Stream HR2 with Flint and Domi. And just the music and the lyrics, everything works out so perfectly for you guys. And I'm so glad because you guys really deserve, like, the world at your feet, kind of. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You guys so are definitely, kind of like, uh, kings right now. <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, it, 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 it's always, it's really nice to hear that support um, because I think it's, it, it's always an uphill battle when, when you're doing something that maybe is a little bit different and is a little bit more retro. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, got that, it's got that retro feel to it. It's, it's, I, I always think of it as, as, as the most Fleetwood Mac tinged. Yes! Bold claim, bold claim, I know. Yeah, I felt like Fleetwood Mac vibes sliding a little bit in and out of there. So I don't know who your guys' like inspirations were for some of your music that you write. Oh. That that is almost one of the hardest questions. It is. Yeah. As a collective to answer, isn't it really? Well, because... you guys are kings now, you have to answer everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, ooh, like... um, go on, Calvin. Hmm? We all definitely share a lot of common artists that we're very much into i think john mayer is the yes the number one collect you know the artist that we all um are into the most together mm-hmm. um wolfpack yeah wolfpack um are there any things that like you and emma have kind of like bonded over or you know just with the songwriting link uh, yeah i think there's quite a lot because i think that the hardest thing when it come, comes to writing songs, especially for Flint, is that everyone has music they like and that they're into, but it might not necessarily be the kind of music that they're best at creating. And personally, me, I'm into some really... I love R&B, and I love all kinds of... I was going to say metal music? I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, do you know what? Metal is the one genre I probably stay the furthest away from. Okay. And, okay. and I, I'm not a, an enormous rock fan either. Country? Whereas there are some great, there are some really good kind of like neo-soul, people like um, NAO, people like m and mm. um, There's a lot of great artists from down in London that are doing R&B and soul really well right now. And I think the approach of the girth they have in their melodies and their beats is something that's Mm. always inspired me for us to put into Flint. Oh, definitely. And when it comes to melodies, I've always really appreciated, like, Sting from The Police. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Sting always starts a melody line when no one else would start a melody line, he'll start on like some yeah. weird note, and you know that's where he comes with that. You know, the young teachers no subject, and that repetition of like little three note parts. Yeah. And I think that was something we went for, but as well, another enormous influence for us when it comes to production and um, riffs and hooks is um, Haim. Mm-hmm. Haim are just goddesses in our eyes. Like they're just incredible. They're just absolute pop masterclass for making pop fresh and new and and thick and girthy and and yeah yeah definitely we're all um and we, and we share that like kind of like appreciation of Haim and and what they do and and what they do with their songs so that's a part of it as well i mean earlier um, you guys were also saying like simon and garfunkel would that kind of be another um inspiration I think to a certain degree, yeah, because we have a couple of songs. We have one song called "Stop" that's unreleased. Okay. We've only done um, we've only done a live video of that, but we do play it all our shows, and that song definitely has that Simon and Garfunkel vibe because the entire thing 
is a unison melody oh, uh, throughout the I chorus. Hear it. I don't know how I can hear it. <laughs> um, it is might it? be on its way. It will be on its way at some yeah. point yeah, soon. Yeah, it will be released one day. Well, we've been recording now for um, not every day, but we have been recording over the past um, three months. I think it is now. Okay. Um, and we've been putting all of our favorite songs into. Um, we're working with a producer for the first time, a guy called Rob Whiteley. Um, he's a what a hero. He's a I blood genius. Rob. He so takes cool. your ideas. Mm-hmm. He takes <laughs> your ideas and he says, "Okay, so that's a really good idea." But let's make it an absolutely brilliant idea because he's just a genius. Okay, that's good. That's really yeah. He really like applies really like the um. Either he really takes it up, kicks it up next, uh, to the next gear, to the next level. Absolutely, he does. And I think it could have been very easy for us to have become almost like the band that sounds like a Fleetwood Mac rehash or the band that sounds like a Police rehash. Or, but we wanted. We had ideas. We just didn't know how to achieve our ideas sonically. And that's why um, listening to Same Again and listening to actually a lot of the songs you guys have to play today, we've dialed that sound. Like, those songs are at 40%. Mm-hmm. And the new songs that we're going to be releasing soon... They're a million percent. Yeah, they're us dialed up to a, a bazillion percent. It, it, yeah. It's like it, it's definitively what we want to be. And it's um, so exciting to be like... Very. We we we're currently like we're in the process of doing it now. It, it's it's happening now, and it's it's so exciting. But also like you just want to share it, but you can't yet. You can't put those out oh, yet. You've got to yeah. get things together, yeah, and yeah, it's, it's almost frustrating. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, it's, it's fun. It's also like uh, Domini here online. Uh, she just released her new song "Home" that we were talking about earlier off air. Oh yeah. Um, oh, congratulations, Domi. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, where where can we find it? Ooh. It's on Spotify, Apple Music. I'm actually in the process of making a music video, so Vivo soon. <laughs> oh, oh awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, nice one. Best we'll of luck with all of it. Yeah, oh, I want to hear it. I'm going to hear it. Thank you. It's it. actually really cool uh, that you say that you're not, you know, you're doing something more unconventional with pop music where you're sticking to your own drum, because that's what I did. I had a lot of people in the music industry tell me to change, there and they try to change everything about me. And it took a lot of strength for me to go, no, like, this is yeah. what I want to do. And so Absolutely I have to, like, yeah, just to yeah. my sound, found who I am, and now my new music is coming out, and I'm just, I'm so aligned with it. It feels like me. It's such good energy. Good, good. That, that, awesome. And that's really good to hear, because I think it, it's so hard to find someone, um, especially now, who, who is really content with what they've created and what they've done. And it's it's a hard line to find, and the fact you found that just that that's just amazing. That it genuinely, that's really cool. Yeah, man. Oh, this is so surreal. You saying that to me? Oh my god! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's so surreal. I was gonna say, I definitely do see a collaboration with you guys coming soon, though. Too. I don't know if it's ne- maybe. Maybe next year or something like that, but we never know. Maybe she'll go out to the UK for a tour, and uh, you know, Flint's opening up, or you know, she's opening up for you. Hey, and- Sign us just up. One little, yeah, let's do just it. Just one little Two show is all it takes, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, no, because you definitely, if, um, especially like with Jiminy's music and Flint, you guys really do, you would sound really good together too. So, Ooh. not just throwing it out there for, you know, for so you both to check out. Hamilton but... Radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, here Excellent. on the DJ Danny show, I always try to make connections for whoever's on my show. Um, I just got somebody signed from somebody that was uh, a band that was from Asbury, New Jersey. Somebody from yeah. California tuned in, and they signed them. So you never know awesome. who's tuning in. Um, but I wanted to make yeah, sure no. that you know who your management is if you guys are signed, and stick to your like stick to what you know. Please don't let them change you guys. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to <laughs> lose you as friends. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, awesome. And it's just amazing for this whole interview and everything you know you're learning and getting to know you guys better like i have only known um <clears throat> the best that i could have brad was from you know you being fabian on house of anubis mm-hmm. and you know just watching and binging that show as i was with my mom who's actually here she wants to speak with you off air later <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> she says hi <Hello. laughs> um 
I had to come home from school all the time, and I would just watch it. I would, like, literally, I'd have to be in bed probably, what, 20 minutes next, and I had to finish the episode. It's mm-hmm. just things <laughs> like this where you, I pick up, you know, a little bit of your character, but your character is mostly you as well. Like, you, you know, you played yourself very well, and you probably have a lot of your um, stuff that you came from he- Fabian, right? Do you guys, like, relate a little bit? I think with Fabian, I think the interesting thing is... But you don't seem I think shy. There's a certain, there's a certain degree of where the only person you know the most mm-hmm. is yourself. Mm-hmm. And when it came to you know acting and things like that, for me, when you go into an audition, you're given almost nothing. So when it came to Fabian, especially, um, I can remember that audition. The in, the the audition was improv, mm-hmm. <laughs> and basically okay. the goal of this audition was for me to convince someone to go back to work the day after uh, they'd been bullied and I had to convince them. So being put in that like compassionate situation, the only thing I can do is act as myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. So okay. it just so happens purely by coincidence, I guess I was in that kind of stereotype and that archetype of characters that were, you know, much like Fabian was, um, it was someone who cared about the well-being of people around them. It, and it was someone who was pragmatic. And that was the thing the writers always used to talk to me about was, you know, what do you want to do with Fabian in season two, in season three? What, what, where, do you, where do you see it going? And, you know, I kind of just said, I was like, well, to be honest, it's kind of like, I would like him to be supportive, yeah. but I would like him to also be a realist mm-hmm. yeah. because I, I am a very realist person. And I think... Um, to be completely honest, when it comes to me participating in society, I think there's probably there's probably a lot of people who actually think I'm maybe a bit too blunt with things. Okay. Even though I'm doing it from a place that's that's good and a place that's that's genuinely wanting someone to be okay. Yeah, I don't necessarily see that. I mean, you being Do you kind of it felt like it was like shy moments, but I, you don't seem shy. So like, I'm shocked. Definitely I'm not shy. <laughs> <laughs> like you're just out in the spotlight. Like, yeah. So there was just some moments, you know, where he would be shy with Nina or Mara, um, Jeremy and Alfie. I mean, <laughs> name the whole crew, right? Um, but I think there was there was a lot of onset dynamic because you know we we lived together, we ate together, we had breaks together. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. we did we did absolutely everything together. And you, as much as you try, as professional as you try to be, that chemistry is always going to make it on camera. It, it always is. Right. So yeah, there was a lot of real real life character and real world playing into that for sure. I definitely agree. Do you still talk to the people from the show? That's what my mom wanted to ask too. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? Um, do you know what? It's 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 really weird because when we all left Anubis, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, how are we gonna survive without seeing each other every day? Yeah, this is gonna like be insane. Three. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna see you. We're gonna be together. We're gonna Skype every day. But the the, the true thing is, I think that um, we all live in different pockets of the world. Some people moved to Los Angeles, some people moved to London, some people still lived. Um, I was the only guy from the north of England. Um, but we do make a conscious effort to always remain in each other's space. Although, uh, to be honest, the only people I still communicate with and keep in touch with are um, Alex, uh, who played Alfie. Oh, he's going to be on my show. Ah. Um, is he? Yeah. Oh, uh, like uh, Alex is. There's there's only one person I've met as witty and funny as Alex, and it's Calvin. Oh, you yeah. can. You know, it's absolutely true. They share but a very Calvin similar sense healthy. of humor. But we've not met yet. I feel like we're going to meet one day. And oh, my God. No, you have to meet. You have to meet. You, you're just su- such similar people. <laughs> um, and then and very uh, the, um, Clarissa, who played Joy as well. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, Clarissa. Yeah, she's really beautiful. Clarissa, Clarissa was always a great person on set to have. She was the person that was really genuinely there for absolutely everyone. In, in whether like, it was a positive or a negative, whether someone was upset or someone was happy, Clarissa was always the person that was there, like being like the hype guy. Mm-hmm. Like everyone could buzz mm-hmm. off Clarissa. And you didn't um, know where she was the couple freaking episodes. <laughs> she was the, sorry? I said you didn't know where she was in the couple first episodes. 
yeah, the first season she wasn't there. And um, oh. and I can remember when they said, you know, Joy comes back for season two and she's there. And then there was this awkward thing where they obviously built up the idea that Fabian had had a relationship with Joy before she was yeah. abducted. Yeah, what about and that? And when they plopped yeah. that in there, I think... Me and Natalia, although we were friends, we always found it a little bit awkward to do kind of those scenes where we were kind of together just because of the way our characters were. Whereas with Clarissa, I sat down with Clarissa the second we found out that there was going to be a bit of a thing. Okay. I was like, are you cool with this? And Clarissa was like, yeah, bro. Clarissa was just really chill about it, and I was like, "Oh, this is cool. This is fine. This is all going to be fine." <laughs> but you and Nat, like you and Nat, Nathal, Nathal, Nathalie, Nathalie? Natalia. N- oh, wow, I was completely off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you and Natalia had really good chemistry on the show, and it was awkward. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. We we used to we used to make a conscious effort to always. Like, like you know, all the movies you see now, kind of like um, to all the lovers I've had before, and and all the all those classic kind of like teen movies, like Fault in Our Stars and things like that. Yeah. We used to analyze mm-hmm. those movies, and we used to almost, almost go too far with trying to generate those awkward romantic moments. We used to do that so <laughs> consciously, but I loved and it. Discuss it so much at length, like, oh, we should let that hang there and really milk it. And then Natalia would be like, yes, we should. And that was, that's what <laughs> that's we would do. We would methodically do it, like, really plan it out and go for it. And I think it worked. I was going to say, I was happy when Fabian started bringing music into the show. Yeah, that too. Oh, my God. Yeah, they so tried, you know, and I can remember them talking about, oh, we need to get Fabian to do a song. And then I turned around, I was like, as much as I would be like, yes, um, I don't think a story about a boarding house that's ruled by an Egyptian cult <laughs> is quite going to do well to like a music video. So it was kind of like a weird relationship with that. That sounds pretty cool, though. I still would watch. What happened to season three? Um, so in season three, at the end of season three, you know what? It's That is where the politics and, and the things behind TV shows come in, you know? Um that was a year where a bunch of shows had um, a bunch of shows had kind of just had a bit of a ratings drop, and uh-huh. Anubis was one of them. And Nickelodeon only has so much money it can spend, um, and yeah, so we kind of went away from season three, and we all kind of sat there and thought, you know what, if season four happened, it would be cool, uh, we'd all be down for it, but. Yeah, we, eventually we just waited for like a month or two and then we just got the phone call and it was like, Do you know what, guys, it's not getting renewed, but thanks so much for, you know, contributing so much of your lives and so much of what you've done to the show. And also as well, I think the story had been left in a place where it was like, Do you know what, that's, we're happy with that conclusion. You know, we were really happy with the way the story had ended there and it wasn't like they left it really hanging where it was like, oh my God, we need to know what happened next. They concluded season three in a way that bought them that right to be able to be like, do you know what? That was it. And yeah, I think they did quite a good job at Nick. What was the end of season three, Brad? I totally forget. Oh my gosh. Do you know what? Uh, I don't know if I can remember it. Do you remember season three? It was Ali, wasn't it? Ali was in season three. um, Rufus? And it was, oh my, uh, Rufus, (laughs) the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. Rufus the bad guy, he fell into, we weren't allowed to call it hell because of the demographic, but he basically was consumed by hell. So that was that was an interesting thing. He tried to kill Joy. Was it? Did he try to kill Joy or did Joy die? And then we brought her back to life. I can't remember. Clarissa yeah. wasn't happy about it, but it was like that. Calvin, you remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me just, I have to watch this TV show. Calvin, did this you all, just this binge this riveting. TV show after you met uh, Brad? <laughs> I'm just gonna have to. I think. Well, I think because I, I met Brad like kind of well after. Yeah. This all ended, and 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 as I got to know him, I kind of just was like, right, I'm just not gonna. I don't know. It, it was. It was like a conscious decision. I was like, sometimes I was like, should I Google a couple of scenes, look on YouTube, and it, and I just thought, no, I don't know. It never felt like. I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna have to go and watch it now. You yeah, know, it is, both should it, watch it, it together, it Netflix, and then he can, and Brad can tell you what's going to happen next if he remembers. <laughs> That'll be fun. 
<laughs> but like An- Anubis still has such a lasting impression on my life as well because of that, because I met Calvin not long after. Yeah. And Calvin saw a lot of, you know, I was still doing bits and bobs of press for like um, the aftermath of season three and things like that. And we had some Nickelodeon opportunities that Calvin like Kim played bass on and things. And that was weird because Calvin saw that kind of side of my life. And the other <laughs> weird thing as well is that um, I met my girlfriend. She was <laughs> she was an <laughs> she was a supporting artist. So she was a background okay. um, actress on Anubis in season one. <laughs> Wait, who who's your girlfriend? She's called Bria. Um, okay. And she okay. basically does the character have a name? No. Well, I we like to call a locker girl because whenever <laughs> they needed someone <laughs> to open a locker or walk to one of the lockers in the background of the cloakroom shots. They would always ask Bria to do it. What so is Bria, she have blonde hair? No. Uh, no, no, she has dark hair, and she's sat next to in the first scene where you meet um, Amber and Mick in the classroom. Yep. And um, Bria is sat right next to Amber, and you wouldn't believe how much delight I take in constantly showing Bria pictures of her in the background of scenes with like weird faces because <laughs> it's like a weird shot. I want to see these pictures. Now, man, but, but like we didn't even Calvin. talk. I didn't even talk to her while we were on Anubis because I kind of liked her and I was too nervous to talk to her. So I was like, well, I'm not going to talk to her because, you know, I kind of like her and and I'm just not that way inclined. I'm not a very forward person. And six years later, we decided to go on a date. Okay, okay. Well, it does take time for you guys to crack that code, but that's good. <laughs> Yeah, so that's kind of like another weird thing about Anubis, and it's yeah, it it it, it shaped my whole life, and yeah, it's 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 interesting. It, but it's nice to talk to two people who were aware of it and you know enjoyed it. Yeah, I have to binge it now because I have to try to find Bria. You need to find Bria. If you find Bria, you definitely need to tweet me or something because it's it, <laughs> see if you can work out who it is. I can. I'll, I'll message it to you or something like that. But yeah, yeah definitely, I definitely. Know, um, and yeah, me and my mom have to find it. It's like a scavenger hunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, find you know, out, find we out. We brought my family together. Like, literally, we would all like race to the TV, my brother, my sister, and I, and we would like sit and watch the show. Yep, same here with my mom. Yep, mother daughter time. Like, seriously. Well, right. do, do you bond. know what? That, that <laughs> genuinely is really lovely to hear. I'm so glad you enjoyed it because it was. It was a labor of love for a lot of us, and it was it was a lot of hard work for the production team and everyone. And to hear that genuinely it makes my day. Th- thanks so much for just enjoying it. I think I almost um, I went to a Christian school, uh, a Christian middle school, when I was uh, watching the show, and oh, right. I would uh, come home and sometimes I forget to do my Bible homework because I was too <laughs> interested in Nina and Fabian. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have to deal with my, my teacher saying something the next day and I'd be like, all I could remember is that episode last night. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, what? I had homework? <laughs> and a lot of Egyptian my mythology. My would like, bet on what would happen. Yeah, we yeah. would too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Make some money with it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, yeah, sell. Sell secrets. Sell secrets. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> we still have um, Julia and Honey to play as well. Okay. So we can play mm-hmm. one song and then we'll talk a little more and let you do um, some of your um, promotions. So if you guys okay. have like, you know, all your social media and stuff when we come back and then we'll end with Honey. Yeah, yeah, sure. So who wants to give us a little information on Julia? Well, I mean, I think we're both in the same boat with Julia, Calvin. We don't really know who. Yeah, Julia's a mystery. Julia's the... but. I, I, I... I think Julia as a song has a really interesting kind of story to it. Um, you know, it's, a, it's about a kind of like, well, it's about Julia. And, and Julia's like, Julia's a troubled girl. Julia's going through some stuff. And it's kind of like, I don't know, you, you feel sorry for Julia. You want her to, to not end up the, in these kind of like situations that she clearly ends up with and, you know, mistakes with boys and that kind of thing. And, yeah, it's just, it's a little sad. Yeah, it is a little sad, because Julia's almost... It's going to make me cry now? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, it's not really a sad song. It's actually a very upbeat song. Okay. But Julia was just written as that kind of throwaway song about, you know, and, and regardless of whether it's, you know, male or female, we all have that one friend where 
we we always need to rush to help them because they just seem to by by sheer luck always kind of like attracted like almost like terrible situations or or maybe because they're a good person they get taken advantage of a lot and that's julia and i think everyone can relate everyone should always relate to and protect the nearest julia (laughs) most definitely yeah i mean sometimes i have been a julia i am that julia sometimes we i think everybody can relate to being a julia we've all been julia at some point (laughs) yeah we've all been julia somehow somewhere (laughs) well we're gonna play um julia and we will be right back this is eugene and sean hamilton radio time now stream hr2 flyt Fall back into bone. You tell me every word they say. And I can tell just by your way you leave at any yard. You fall too easily. Exactly what to do. Put it out for all to see. Take what they want, but not what you need. 
Wow. I love that. Julius. That was so good. Yes, right? It's like... It's just... Thanks, guys. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, well, thank you. Real quick, Brad and Calvin, happy, happy. Um, before we do get ready to start ending this interview very shortly, so Minnie actually has to go. She has um, a little... Go on, Domini. You can tell them. I, I have a meeting with an investor for the new song, so I have to go. Ooh. But it was so great speaking to you guys and chilling virtually. And likewise. <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you so much for appearing. I love it. <laughs> Best of luck with your no, investor really meeting. It was super surreal. And you guys are just so cool. Like, very down to earth, very authentic. Oh, oh yeah. cute. You, you too. No, it's been, it's been a pleasure to, pleasure to have Good you on. Chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you so Best much. Well, we can all be friends now and speak all the time. That'd be cool. And when I come <laughs> to uh, the UK, I'm expecting to see you guys. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I just know when you're coming over. Yeah, coming too. We'll support. Yeah. Right, cool. Well, cool. Good luck well, with okay, I gotta go, Danny. but bye. Thank you so much bye. for having me, Danny. Of course. Thank you, Domini. I'm glad you're here as well. <laughs> Have a great Thanks evening, Domini. All right, guys. Um, so this is the time we, uh, we're going to start wrapping things up. Apparently, I'm okay. sorry. The interview is slightly over, sadly. <laughs> <That's no word. laughs> um Give out all your uh, promotions where people could find you. Oh, I'm an expert at this. Right. Flint, at Flint Official on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, on Facebook, we are at Flint Official Music. We're Flint on SoundCloud, uh, Apple Music, Spotify. We're probably on the Amazon streaming. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> uh, YouTube, Flint. Flint, what's the YouTube? You oh, Google God, what's the YouTube? Are you on Google Play? I, I think I think, think we so. do think have so. some songs on Google Play. Okay, because yeah. that's what I listen to at work constantly. So if you have a Flint radio station, I'd be passing it. So. Oh. Yeah. There's something. That's there's definitely some stuff on a lot of streaming uh, streaming platforms for sure. I think you guys might have one normally, but I'll definitely check that out. But you can continue. Uh, what else have we got? We got Bandcamp. Bandcamp oh, we have Bandcamp. Um, yeah. Do you guys you have can... Snapchat? Oh, we don't. Uh, no, I don't think so, no. <gasps> so I <coughs> added a Flint official for no reason? <laughs> uh, I'll have to get one sorted. Well, that name's already taken. Oh. By someone oh. else. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. Mind you, there is a French rapper called there Flint. There is a French rapper called Flint. So maybe I added the French rapper. Are, uh, <laughs> we're hoping that that's never a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, hope, we're hoping that that doesn't really run in to anything. But um, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed with it being French and a solo rapper. There's quite yeah. a lot of difference. Yeah, it's not really the territories. Not really going to step on each other's feet there, I guess. No. Actually, Although I am, I you know, see you guys in the right Flint. zone, I can spit bars. I, mean, so. I don't see Flint on Google Play. Well, oh, well, that's something we need to fix. Yes, please. Can you guys fix that? <laughs> Absolutely. Because we'll that's what I that. listen to constantly. So, I'd appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely something. Good, so everybody can follow you on Flint. Um, and your Instagram again, you said? At Flint Official. F-L-Y-N-T Official. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. I had a blast having you. Again, I wanted to just say this on air and as well for yourselves. If you ever have music or you need help with promotions, all you got to do is either tag me on a post or message me, and I will share it in a heartbeat. I'm 100% oh, there for you guys. We'll keep um, you looped in you in have, future. Yeah, I was going to say, you have my social media now, so we're definitely uh, very tight. And let me know if I can help you. If you also have any events coming up, like if you have like an event coming up, even if it's in the UK, um, send me over the information, and I'll make it as a little promotion here on um, Hamilton Radio so we can make a little sweeper for you guys where people can That's purchase perfect. and stuff. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, so just so you know, um, use me to your ability what you can. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so oh, much. We appreciate that so much. Of course. Yeah, we so really appreciate you. that support, Danny. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. We are going to close with Honey. Um, right after a song, real quick, before either of you both hang up, we're going to end air. If you could just stay on for one second, Brad um, and Calvin. My mom wants to just say something to you. She doesn't want to say Yeah, sure. Air, so. uh, cool. Then I promise you can go to sleep and have tea and biscuits, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're no going to close with Honey. And then, like I said, just stay on right after, please. Thank you. Yeah, okay. no worries. There you go. Now you can come over. Count me checked out day and night When you come in home Wondering what you say this time You give me a sh- give me no words on You give me a drink if I pour another You keep your heart like a tide I don't 
Brad, are you still there? I'm still here. All right, and Calvin's there as well? Calvin there too, or is it just Brad? Oh, I think it might just be me. Nope. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, he's there, he's there, okay, he's there. there. He is. Okay, hello, here's my mother, Sandra. Go on, Mom. Yes. Hey, hello. Sandra. Hello, Sandra. No, no, I, yeah, you know, I just got, you know, she got me interested in House of Anubis, you know, and it was like, <laughs> you know, What's happening next? You know, we were just like pinned to the episode, you know, like we couldn't wait for each one, you know. <laughs> um, oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I missed the beginning of the interview because I was driving here. I kind of got caught up with taking care of the dog and, you know, different things, um, you know, after work. But anyway, um, I, I just wondered, you know, I didn't know if she had already asked you how you got started. Um, <laughs> You know, with the acting, uh, with the music. Oh, okay. You know, I just wanted to know a little more about your background. So, wow, well, um, you've firstly, got quite a story with the old beginning, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's quite a beginning. Firstly, though, Sandra, thank you so much for your kind words about the show. I'm, I'm really genuinely glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, but how I actually started out in it was, um. When I was a kid, I used to sing um, and I used to act in local um, productions, just, you know, village hall kind of stuff. Uh -huh. um, but then I heard that they were auditioning in a city called Newcastle, which was two and a half hours away from where I'm from. Um, and they were auditioning for people to be in. Um, have you heard of, you've heard of Billy Elliot, the musical? I I think I have, yeah. I think it's okay. still on Broadway, but it's not on the West End anymore. But uh -huh. um, they were auditioning for Billy Elliot, the musical, a musical adaptation of the British film. And I went along to that. Oh, cool. Um, and completely unexpectedly, I actually ended up getting the part of the support in um, the support in young role of a guy called Michael. Um mm -hmm. And I was in that show, and th that's kind of what started it all for me. So I moved down to London when I was about 10, 